All right. Okay, so welcome everyone. Today is 7th of May. And I'll come to that in a bit, Ben. Today is 7th of May, Friday, 9 a.m. Uh, British summer time. We are at online workshop practice bench top working session. So yes, for attendance, it's fully uh, automated. So uh, the cloud recording uh, for Zoom makes sure the attendance is taken in the cloud. So no problem in that one. If you have any concern, just take screenshots at your side. I mean, that's easier, but no, there's no need. All right, so I want to start by a, by a, me sharing screen. I want to introduce you a little bit to what we will do. If you, if you check the uh, blackboard, we already have some materials and we have a video actually about this bench, bench top working session. So if you can watch that uh, later on, that would be also nice just to keep, keep it in your mind. Okay. So for safety, uh, you already know, but just always good to remember. Uh, safety shoes and goggles are the top priority for uh, and mandatory equipment. Okay, and we also have a uh, lab coat. Um, lab coat is kind of optional. It protects you from the chips and uh, oil, but it's, it's why not? If, you, if it's there, just wear it. And earplugs for uh, noise, like there are some sharp noise in the machine shop. Yeah, so we can have them optional and some gloves as well to protect, to handle the material and to protect our hands. So we have a, a drill press in this uh, session. So drill press is the most dangerous equipment because it's a rotational high power equipment. It has two emergency stops, as you can see. One is on the bench and the one is on the machine side, like at the left side of the column here. You, you, what we do is we just have to locate this before the session, right? So uh, we directly press it if something goes wrong. And even if you're a bystander, you just press it if you feel something dangerous. Because if you stop something, cut the power immediately and uh, avoid danger. Why not just do it? It's better than just keep running and uh, make it more dangerous. And we also have a safeguard, uh, like a well, like a guard, which which can be used, which should be used also uh, all the times when you are drilling, because it protects you from the broken tool, as you can see here, and also flying chips from the uh, workpiece. Okay, because there's nothing else which can protect. Um, with, us from the machining uh, machining side. Great. So, in in this practice, we will do a demonstration, and uh, well, normally we also do practice in the physical session uh, for the bench top working tools. Um, for the practice side, uh, face face to face is not in in is not easy. Uh, this year, it's impossible actually, so we couldn't do it. So we will try to give you a feeling of face-to-face -to -face through the online by our help of our GTAs, thankfully. So you'll start by a mild steel plate and then have uh, four holes and two tapped holes, uh, two tapped holes um, in the end. So we will have a lot of tools to use. So you can see a hacksaw, tapping wrench, like a hammer. So a lot of tools. So if you have any question, just ask in the chat and I will be answering during the session. All right. We will come to this uh, during the session anyway. So our demonstrator, Gary, will show you. So here are the steps of what we will do today. So we will start by um, marking lines and, uh, well, we start by, uh, marking lines and punching the holes and then sewing and then sewing the edges like this angular edge and the square edge and drilling the central hole and filing to rectangular hole and then drill four holes and then finally we'll tap them so 
there will be a Kahoot quiz along the session. So please go into Kahoot.it and uh, I'll put the pin number in the chat and you can join it. So let's start the session now. Oh, there's a question. Let me see. Um, it was just somebody needs to mute their mic. It was just because we can hear like kids in the background, but <laughs> it's my children. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, uh, it's it's in the morning. Like uh, I, I cannot stop it. Sorry about that. But you will not hear it in the session, so that's a good thing. Okay. That's okay. So I'm okay. just going to mute because all the thing will be done in the lab. And uh, by the GTA and the demonstrator. So let's go back to our demonstrator, Gary and Gökhan. And uh, thank you, uh, everyone, to be he being here. So let's start. You can start, Gary, if you want. All right. All right. All right. What we're going to do, we're going to produce this part. As a drawing, we're going to go through the step by step instructions. First of all, we get our material. You got the material. If you look at the material, you got a nice machine edge, two smooth edges. These two are saw cut edges. What we're going to do first is we're going to file these just so they're flat and square using the square, we get that, you can see the gap, I'm going to try and get that a little bit square. So first of all, do your piece on the vice, turn it up, Let's get the file, on the top of the file, the file, Once you get rid of the saw marks, you got the nice filed edges. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Then it's sharp on that edge, so we have to take the edges off. So if we raise it up in the bag, a little bit higher, and then use the same file, just file at an angle, take that edge off. Use the edges. It. Again, we just check we can get that square. Still a little bit out there, but do the other side. We've got the rough edges of the saw cut. We're going to do now. Take them rough edges off. Again, got the square. Check how square we are. We're still a little, not too bad. That yeah. for checking for checking that, Gary. Yeah. Also, we're going to measure it. Sorry, Murat. What, what were you saying? No, I have a question about the square. So yeah. You you check it. Uh, you check both the flatness, right, and the, also if it is straight like if it's a 
if it makes an angle at the same time, right? We're checking the edges. So every so square. We, so we know we have to file a little bit more off that edge. Oh, okay. If I file uh, I'm filing that corner now to try and bring it a little bit more square. And again, it still needs a bit more off at that end. This one looks this one looks like it needs more work also, right? Yeah. Yeah, a bit more. Not a lot, but it's all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, by filing it, it's getting a little bit flatter. Don't need more of that top corner. Maybe maybe we can ask for the audience if they think that there is. I think for this one, it's. We can see how it's how it, just got to keep filing it so it's so it look a little bit more square. And that one's that one's not bad as well. Okay. Yeah. Also, the other the other thing to use is a vernier caliper. We clean the faces we're going to measure and we push it together and you can see the zero zero line lines up you see that pull that out now if i measure the two faces that we haven't can we ask gary to to audience to read that to read that value when you measure it. Push that in. Okay, everyone, can you can you help us tell what this one measures now? And that is 50 millimeters. Oh no, no, <laughs> Gary, you shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, Gary already Gary already right, gave you the let's yeah. let's see what the two filed edges, what that measures. See if yeah. you can answer that one, because we know it's 50 because that's what the material comes at. So this is a little bit different. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's fine. Which is this one? How about Sorry. this one? Sorry. Yeah. Can everybody say, like, can some, some of you guess what this one is? Just a couple of answers is fine. To read the vernier. Okay, so we have an answer 49. Oh, yeah, but you should check the zero mark. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have an answer 51. Okay, so it's somewhere between 49 and 51 in this case. I'll try to do the focus again. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, Gary, could you explain? I think it's a bit like more? 50, 50. point eight or uh, fifty point eight. Yeah, we hmm. have a, another exact answer. Fifty point eight, and uh, I, I can't. I, it's it's quite hard to tell on the camera because it's not completely still. Yeah, I try to do my best. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the right. I understand it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, yeah that, no problem. But uh, you are right. It's around. I think Gary may check again. Put it down. I'm going to stay as still as possible. I might change it to 0. 0.6. 0. 0.6? Yeah. Or 0. Yeah. 0.61 or... 
Oh, that's sorry, 0.62. Okay, so, Gary's going to have a look. Yeah. So, yeah, so between the six and the eight, so I'd say about 50.7. Mm -hmm. Great, so 50.7. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, people got it. Yeah, six, six, four. So you can see like the accuracy of these older style verniers. Now we have digital ones. So these are these are very old, very out, outdated. Now you wouldn't really use these. Yeah, Gary, can, can you just uh, show again? Like the zero zero mark should be yeah, checked zero, first, no. right? No, I mean no. The when you measure something, the zero crossing should be checked first, right? When you measure the zero check, should, the zero, zero mark should be checked yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. I always uh, yeah just have it. You would you would zero just check that the zero is right. But with yeah. these, there's no, there's no way of adjusting it, really. If, if it wasn't zero, it would be damaged. Yeah. More okay. than anything, you don't actually have to. There's no adjustment, no real adjustment. So it's just a slide up and down. Yeah, so I think everybody, right. got, everybody got, got it. Like so the zero would always be zero if it wasn't. And obviously, we'll probably throw it away. Yeah. Damaged. It's not a digital one. You could set it at different... At different points, but you could check yeah. it, and then if you check, we we know this material has been rolled at fifty millimeters. So to check that at fifty mil, you know, it is more or less that. Uh, so the top part is the one millimeter each increment, and yeah. bottom part is the zero point zero two millimeter each increment. Yeah. So you oh. read it by wherever that those lines might meet up. Meet up. Right. Like you say with that one, it's it's over fifty, but it's under fifty-one. So again, you go along the line until the two lines meet up, which is around. Depends how hard you squeeze it as well. You don't tend to squeeze it too hard, but you need to just push it. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's that's clear now. Enough. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So you would keep filing the job until we get it down to fifty millimeters. Again, it's quite long-winded. Again, but we're quite happy with that now. We've got, the, got rid of them sharp edges, yeah? Yeah? So now, the next, we want to mark it out so we can then cut the corners. So we're going to go over to the to the uh, linear height gauge. Oh, first of all, we're going to have to blur, put some blue. So we've got the marking out blue. Let me just get a little bit on the brush. Now we're going to go and brush that across. So this helps with uh, th this blue ink will help with uh, Gary yeah, with the marking, marking right? Yeah. So we can see it. Mm -hmm. So we got that. Come over to the Benny High gauge. This is a Benny High gauge. Now this is digital. Again with this, we check that it's zero at the bottom. We're going to use this as a marking the pet piece. We're going to mount it. So we just check. Wind that down to the bottom. And then for me, it's just a little bit out, so I now press a zero. Oh, which zero is it? Just to check. And down again. So on zero one, zero one. All right. So now we got our drawing. We're looking at the sizes that we need to mark on there. We need to mark the, the four holes, the central hole. We need to mark the angle, the 10 by 10. So we'll start with the 10 by 10 corner. So we set the vernier. 
using the, the handle at the back, but it's an up and down. Mine's up and down. And you can use a small handle. But... So I've set my zero. I'm down there. Try and get it dead on. Okay. It's a little lock at the side. So we'll lock that. It doesn't move. Yeah. And we use our hand just to move it around a, a granite block, which is so, perfectly flat, so there's no bumps or. So did you did you fix it now to ten millimeter from the surface yeah, plate? Yeah, that's ten millimeters. I set I set me zero. I've moved it up ten millimeters and locked it at the side, so we can okay. mark a line on our on our job now. Ten millimeters. Yeah. Got a square, so I can put my job on there, hold it with my thumb, and then I mark a line. I'm just going to mark that corner. Just go about there and send it. If you look on there, you see the line. I'm not sure we can see the line really well. Uh, no. no, the line cannot so be seen. Without the marking blue, if you look there, can you see the line? But... Now it's better. Oh yeah, it's okay now. Yeah. Now, if we didn't have the blue on it, I might line without the blue. That's a little bit more difficult to see. You can see it with the light. But, yeah, you have to play around with the, the, the blue. The blue makes it a lot easier to see. Yeah, it's a contrast. Yeah, contrast is much easier. So now I make it ten millimeter that way. I need to move it eight degrees. That was 10 millimeter line, that thing. There we've got the carbon arts out. You've got to do that one. Look at our drawing, and then we're going to put the center hole. So we know our job is 50, 50 millimeters. So now I'm going to move this to. We're going to put a hole in the middle. It's 50 mil, so it's 25. Lock that off at 25. Got our job. Again, we're just going to mount that hole, but now we can come all the way across. I'll do one line there. Let me use that. So we've got two. We've got a nice central. Now, in this corner, this 10 millimeter corner, on a drawing, you will, uh, will sometimes see um, a right angle or um, it's like a, a designated symbol for like the corner where all the sizes come from. And that's why we're going to mark that 10 millimeter square and cut that out. So we're always going to use that, that corner as our, date, as our date. And we're always going to turn the job that way and that way. So if there is anything wrong with the sizes, corner. yeah. If there is anything wrong with the size, that all the sizes are from that corner, from the this edge and this edge. So all the all the measurements either go up that way or come across. And if you mark your central line. And it the other way, I always keep it always oh, always keep way. that square corner on the on the floor on the base. Yeah. 
Okay. Right, half 25 plus half cent for us. Right. Again, we go back to the drawing. Now, we've got the 10 by 10 in the corner. It looks like a square hole in the middle, but when you look at the drawing, it's actually not. 16 and 14. So while we have our job in the corner, maybe we can maybe we can ask Gary, maybe we can ask them where should we mark the where should we mark for the one of the holes there? Maybe you can ask them the next distance needed or so we want to mark the middle one. We're gonna mount the middle so we can cut that square hole out. So where should we begin then? So what we're going to do now is looking at that corner and looking at the drawing, it's 14 across. So from our 25 now, we're going to deduct seven. So we're looking at 25. So seven, we go down to 18. So you're marking the rectangle there. Because we don't know what the size is from the bottom. Yeah. So from that zero, from our zero, zero in the corner there, we don't know what that is. We can work it out because it's 14. It's 25 minus four, half of 14, which is seven, which is 18. So we've got our 10 and then we've got a gap of eight. So we mark that line across. Yeah. Okay. And then from the 25, we're going to go up seven as well. So we're going to go on Now, when you look at our job, we've got, we can start to see how we're going to get that square hole. We're going to turn it that way. Should we ask them what is the distance to begin the 16 here? So that yeah. they made the calculation yeah. themselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Let's, let, yeah, thank you. Let's ask the that. Zero is in the corner. You've got yeah, a line so, of 25. So then you've got a. So what will be the value? Yeah. Uh, can, can, some, some, can some of you um, give some reply about that like what would be the marking uh, necessary two sides as well we need the, the bottom line and the top line yeah like so the left side line and the right side line right in this yeah, case exactly it's like we yeah. explained earlier for the 14 but with the 15 the 16 sorry 17 and 33 17, 17 and 23 23 yeah Seventeen and thirty-three. Oh, thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yes, exactly. Thirty-three. Sorry. Thirty-three. Yeah. yeah. Seventeen and thirty-three. Yeah. yeah. So now we come to there. That's the While we're at thirty-two, instead of going back down to seventeen, we may as well just go up to thirty-three. Doesn't matter what order we do it. In. That's common sense, I think. There you go. It depends how. And what we do now? We've turned the job around so you can see those lines that were across that way now we're going to turn it yeah we're going to do that top line uh, we'll do that one there. And then what was the other one 17 so we'll go down to 17. Well, we've still got it set like that. So, and then we can go all the way across. Yeah. So now when we turn the job and we look at the drawing, you can see that. Yeah, that makes sense. Right now. The thing we need to do, we need to mount the corner. 
to 15, 15. So we can work out from our zero using our datum. It's 15 less 50. Any, any ideas? So can we have the answer? So we're going to mark from this, from the, the zip, from the bottom, we're going to mark up. But rather than turn the job round, because if that isn't exactly right, we're going to make a mistake on this corner. So we, we always need to measure from this point. So we need, we're deducting 15 from 50. Okay, so... Uh... 35. Yeah, 35, yeah. 35, yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> so again, keeping our datum at the corner, just going to mark, but we're not going to mark a line all the way across, we're just going to mark it there. We can see a small line. And then again, we turn our datum. All right. We're just going to do a small amount. Uh -oh. You can see on there, if you want to do that one. You want to do that one. Okay. Get it with the other one now. Right. What would you do? Thank you, Matt. Going to be there and then turning that around the side. All right. So, to mount the angle across, because we, we haven't got anything we can turn it with, we're going to use a rule and um, a scriber. So let me just change that one. Use a rule and a scribe. Yeah. It's a scriber. What we're going to do, we're going to use the room. We're going to come across with two marks that we've made. And we're going to just scribe a line from that edge there. So, yes, we can. So, there we are. Yep. Right. The other thing we need to do, we need to mark the holes. So on these on the center lines, we're gonna have four holes. When you look at the drawing there, you can see the sizes. Again, we've got 25 to the middle, but it's only giving us the size between the sensors of the hole. So again, we need to use our maths. It doesn't actually give the size from the datum. So we know the job is 36 between the two holes. So it's 36 from 50. And then again, divided by two. So Any can ideas? we have the answer somewhere? So how, how high are we going to set the vernier to mark that central hole, uh, that first hole? So why is this distance, basically? Seven? Yeah. we we'll go to the vernier. That quick. Like that. Again, we don't have to go all the way across because we have lines everywhere. You just make a, a line across that. Seven. There we are. Yeah. Again, looking at the two holes, 90 degrees. Again, that's 36. So we know 
it was seven last time. It's 50 again, so it's seven again. So we turn that 90 degrees while we've got it set at seven. Now we've got our two. Here and here. Now, what we could do, we could mark seven and seven on the other side, but what if our job is a bit out of size? So what we what we would do now, we'll just mark the other one. So we keep what we do. So we've got a seven there. And a seven there. So we could mark seven all the way round, but then the 36 might not be correct. What would be the best way of doing it, coming from the data, would be to go seven plus 36 is give, give a shout out. Of 50 minus seven. Yeah, 43, yeah. And what we're going to do is we're just going to mount that top one again, turn it 90 degrees. And that one, that one, that's on. Just do that one as well. Speed us up. And that one, that one. Turn it down and do that. And So that is the four holes here, here, and here. And here we have the rectangle in the middle. Okay. Different from a scriber, we're going to use the center punch. Slightly different, it's got a bigger head. We've got the hammer, you know, we're going to put that, put that on our marks. We've made, so we're going to center punch the hole so we're ready for drilling. So we'll come to the center. Again, best we can. And we just on it. And we get the center punch mark in the center. What we do, and then go around each one. So we've got our five holes marked in the center. Then. If you notice, I only hit the center punch once. If you take it, some people like to hit it once or two or three times, but the center, the center punch can jump. And then you end up with two or three center punch marks. So you want to know which one is right. So you always hit it just the to, just to once. If you want to hit it again, take it out, put it back in, hit it for a second time, make it a little bit deeper. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There we are, all marked out. We got our job now. So the next step is going to be to cut the square corner out and file it and cut the angle off and file it. Again, we can check it. So go back over to the side. Set our job up. What I'm going to do, I'm going to set the line close to the top of the vise and as square as I can. Because that will help as I, as I saw down the line that I don't go too far and get my saw. I'll just do this bit and then. Yeah. I'm going to line that up just to the right of the line. I'm going to use my, the knuckle of my thumb 
to make sure I don't move the blade because then the blade can end up going all over the place. So I use knuckle of my thumb, line my blade up, and then I just draw the saw back. So I get a start, but I'm drawing it backwards so I don't actually cut into my thumb until I start to just get that deep enough. And again, safety, one hand on the end of the saw, holding the handle, and then just pull. Again, start off slowly. Fast motion. I'm going to use the top of the vise. I can hear the, the difference, the softer steel, and that the vice jaws are hardened. So I know when I've got down to the up there. And so I'll put. Oh, this looks very good. <laughs> what do you then? Turn it 90 degrees. Again. That's it square. This time I'm going to go to the left of the line. Try and get my saw blade as close as I can to that line. And then use a knuckle to draw it back. Slowly so it doesn't jump off and cut me, cut my hand. Once I feel like I've got a good start on it. See how the saw blade wants to jump around until we get to start. And use the length of the blade. Yeah, this is this is great. So, Maxim, I, I would like to take them to Kahoot, please, and to a break later on. And, so, should we uh, have a break for us here now, the time you did the quiz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so you can have a break um, until... Uh, I'll just start cutting that off and then we'll... We, can, we'll finish to, we finish to cut that off and then we can have a break. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. So okay what sure, we've sure. got, we've got our corner square there now. And what we're going to do, we're going to file that square. Also, I've got to cut that one now to cut this angle we put that in but we're not going to cut it across the top of the vice because we have to put the saw that way we're going to again to try and saw down again i'm going to use the hardened edges of the vice i'm going to line that up the best i can with the edge of the vice uh, so i'm using the vice as a guide for the saw cut again it's a little bit more awkward what you'll find is the saw will want to just slide down like that, like that. So again, I'm trying to use maybe the edge of my thumb and then my knuckle. I can't really get my knuckle in there. We can keep my fingers out of the way. And I'm going to sort of draw it slowly so we'll get a good start. And once I've got, once I've got my saw cut started, 
כנען. And I will continue to saw down that line. Yeah, this is great. So uh, we'll do that while you have a break, if you want. Yeah, yeah thank you. So I will. Uh, yeah, so we are now at a very good uh, uh, time, and uh, we will meet at uh, five after ten, uh, Gary. So five past ten. Okay. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, but everyone, please don't leave because we will have a Kahoot quiz, and then uh, you you can also take a break. So. If you don't know the Kahoot uh, pin number, I'll just share it now so you can join. So could, could everyone join, please? Before we take a break, I want to have a short, very short three questions quiz. Uh, use your student ID, by the way. Oh, OK, I see uh, someone already coming. <laughs> Use our student ID if you can, just just for being anonymous. Yeah. So I see eight people here. Can we have? We are much more than eight. So I, okay, ten, nine. Um, please could you put the Kahoot pin in the chat again, please? Oh yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, Kahoot pin is this one. So it's seven zero one six one eight nine. Okay, so we are eleven. Okay, 12, 13. Yeah, I'll just wait one more minute. And I want to start because I want you to have a, some break as well. Okay. Okay, so, so let's just start in this case. So first question, how many emergency stops or e-stops does the drill pr press have? Uh, red one is one, blue one is two, yellow one is three, and green one is none. So no e-stops. Let's see. By the way, sorry, I didn't share the screen. I should share my screen, right? That will be easier for everyone. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, but uh, everybody get it. Almost everybody get it right. So it's two. Yes, correct. Two e stops. One on the bench, another one on the machine. So let's go to the next one. Let's see who is leading. Okay, great. Let's go. Second one. Which equipment is used for marking lines? Red is surface plate. Blue is vernier caliper. Yellow is height gauge. And green is square. Oh, it's quite a long time taking. If everybody can answer it, uh, we can skip this waiting. <laughs> okay, so let's see what's the answer. Yeah, it's a height gauge. Yeah, vernier caliper is for measuring the dimension, right? So, and a square is for measuring perpendicularity. Surface plate is the 
plate that we put height gauge on. So great, so most of you got it. So let's see who is leading now. Oh, okay, good job. One zero one nine. Okay. Where where do we install the workpiece for sewing? So red is work table, blue is drill press vise, yellow is tool holder, and green is bench vise. Okay, bench vice, correct. It's the vice on the bench, right? Fixed to the bench. And uh, drill press vice is is a portable one. It cannot be really used for this purpose. Sewing is quite a effort, you know, it needs a lot of effort. So not easy to hold at the same time when sewing. A tool holder is just for holding tools. Yeah. Okay, so we will have three more questions later on, but it will be in the second hour. So yeah, okay, great. So we are having a lead now already. So we will uh, have a 10 minute break now. So please uh, go have some rest and then we will we will rejoin at 10.06 a.m. See you, thank you. So I'll just pause the recording for now. So I start recording again. Uh, Yes, so in this uh, second part, we will do the rest of the operations, uh, which will be to mainly to uh, produce the holes. So we are with Gary now, Gary and Gekka. There you go, Gary. We're ready. Yeah, ready. All right, so we, we've sewn the corner off and we've sewn the square corner. Now we've got to try and square it up and finish it off with a file. I'm going to line it up in the vise, put my mark line to the top of the vise there, as you can see, best I can. I'm going to use a slightly different file, I'm going to use a square file, square profile. I'm going to file that. I'm going to file the bottom, not the side. What I can do is a little bit of the side as well. Keep looking at it, checking it. Checking that I'm getting down to that line. Again, the closer you do, you do your soft foot, the less filing. Then you want to try and keep it square. Okay, we've still got quite a lot to file off there. Go and have a go at that. And then, what we've done earlier, what we have to do, we can measure it with the square to check the line is square. But then it's not perfect, we can use the square. That way, check that. So we'd have to check, we need to file a little bit more off. Also, we can check the size with the vernier. We can't use this. These are for external sizes, like we did before. Those are for internal, which we'll show in, in a minute when we do the, but if we go to the end, we've got a piece that comes out. So what we can do, we can put that at the top, pull that bit down, and we can take our measurement. Oop, it. Oh, our measurement is nearly 10 millimeters. Yeah. So that was our flat measurement there. Let me show that bit at the top. And we can turn it the other way. Again, we can do the same. Bring it down. You can see the difference there. Gone a little bit too far. Nearly 12, is it? Yeah, about 11. That 
eleven point seven now, I think. Hold on. Close the line. Have a look. And take it out. Take it out and check it. Yeah, that's not bad. Just a little. Not bad again. I can check it with the vernier. Check the sizes. Slightly under. Yeah. If you still file a bit more up. Now we're going to do the angle side, so we put that in. An angle. And that up. Then we can use our file that we used before, the triangular file. Just file the top. Again, file into the line. Getting rid of the saw mark, got a nice smooth fire. And take it out, have a look at it. Yeah. And just to take the sharp, got a slightly sharp edge there, we can just by hand just angle it. Get rid of our birds. Yeah, nothing sharp on there that's going to cut us. Yep. I'm quite happy with that. So now what we've got to do, drill the central hole so we can then do our rectangular hole in the middle. So we'll come over to the drill. Got our drill in there. This is the drilling machine. Yeah, put the drill in. It's a hand shut. You can just check that central as well. Turn it on. So we know we've got the drill in. Got the vice. We've got a clamp here that we can clamp the vice to. We'll put that joint on this thing. Put our job in the vice, hand vice, tighten it up. It's nice and tight. And to line that centre punch hole, line it up if you can. I like to turn the drill backwards, it just drops into the centre punch. And that's spanner. Keeping the drill down so the job doesn't move, just tighten the clamp up. Nice. And then line the drill. Down, come down, down. Start and stop at the side. Turn. And if we need to turn it off, or we've got an emergency stop as well. Yeah. Holding the vise. Nice and steady. Check the job will probably be a bit warm. Yeah. 
I'll drill in the middle. Hey, Gary, by the way, what was the speed you used for drilling? Uh, the drilling speed is on the side of the drill, set quite slow for steel. Um, you can see the belt is on the bottom. Uh -huh. The bottom. Uh, so it's yeah. 480. So it's about 480 that speed. But by setting the belt on the top of the drill, you can speed the drill up or down. But for steel, you need about 480. Maybe 800 is probably a bit too quick to do that. Probably aluminium on that. Depends on the size of the drill as well. Yeah, and the drill so is we, like uh, 14 millimeter, is it? Is it 14 yeah. millimeter? We've got our hole, our central hole there. You can see it's gone slightly out, it's gone slightly over because it's a 13 milli drill. We only had half a millimeter of time. So there's not a lot we can do about that, but we're just gonna have to try and find that square now. So we put that in the vice, like we did before, just to do the square corner. Put our bottom line. This is quite a lot of filing. Again, using a square file. Put in the hole. And then we're just going Again, because we got little bits of swath there, we move it out of the way. You can see that I was starting to get towards the line. We've got to do all four corners. It's that quite well. Again, put it in, line that, line your bottom line up. Divide. Now what we're going to do is probably concentrate on this corner. Again, you can stop every now and again, just have a look, check that you're still in line. You're not going off a tangent somewhere. Just checking it. What was concentrating on there was actually fat, putting the pressure down. So I'm actually filing to the line that's at the top of the vice. I'm not really using the side lines. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. And then try and use that line, that second line. And now we're then filing down. And get down to that line. We're not really trying to file along the side. Just needs lifting off the top. Top of the line. Again, what we can use, we use the square to check. And we can 
use the bottom of the square to check how close that is to being square. We're going to check in it that way. Are we, are we flat and square again? Uh, we've used this face, the two faces of the vernier, we've used the end of the vernier, and these two on that side, so we turn the vernier around, we can do an internal hole. We can check what size that is. So can we remember from the drawing what they should be? We do yeah. that one. So it, we aim for 16 by 14, right? Yeah. So it's very near. Yeah. So again, you, you again it's down to filing. You can see the amount of effort we're putting into the filing and the accuracy is not quite what it would be on the machine. You could machine it quicker. It's very time consuming to do up the file. And we've been fast because we did it while while you were on yeah, the break. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll turn it around and do this top one now. You can see how that you get the swarf on the vice. If you clean that swarf off the vice, when you turn it, you can get your line on close so and we'll try and just square that one. Again, you would measure it with the square with the vernier to check you're not going outside. I mean, we did the drill did move a little bit and it, it has drilled it a little bit. Our sensor. So if you came to the session, you would be doing this as well, everyone. So it's quite enjoying this one. It's easier to put the pressure on the file going down than trying to file along the sides. Yeah. Even though that you could use all four edges of the file, you don't pull the file up, you actually pressure. It's easier to put pressure on the file going down. Use your body weight to keep the file. and the square and so you get it within your sizes right the next so the next bit moving on from that because you can spend as long as necessary getting that up absolutely perfect but you can see how time consuming it is and how much effort was put into it to try and get that size yeah so now what we're going to do we're going to move on to drill four holes four holes two through holes and two tapped holes so we'll start with the tapped holes two 8.5 through and then m10 by 1.5 
Fred, if you are. Yeah, so we're looking at our, draw, our job and the drawing. It's this hole and that hole that we need to drill 8.5. So we have an 8.5 drill. An 8.5 millimeter drill and put that in the chuck. And remembering it's that these two holes that we need to, to drill for the job in, like we did before, and we drill down and line it up with the center punch out the best we can. Spin it backwards so we'll get it in. Turn it on. I can feel it dropping there. Uh, just nip that off. And turn it down. Down, down again. Same speed. Still old device. Uh, Check in the right position. So that you know, you, you can see when you drill as well here, yeah, it's open. Um, Maxim, maybe show the other view, it's better through the guard. Through the guard, yeah, but just I don't want to yeah. bother Gary too much. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, you have to see as well. Yeah, that's also good. What's going on now? Huh? Not drawing at all. So we struggle a bit with the drilling now. Yeah. Draws a fine last time. So, as you can see, as we try, we need to find another drill bit or use the other drill because we're struggling with the holes there. So, we just changed the drill bit. Oh, it's a bit worn now, or? Yeah, I think that. a bit worn. Yeah. So we're oh. using another one. So it's the third one we use now. <laughs> Hopefully it will be good. That's it's the material. Yeah. Come on. Hmm. It feels like fine, but we drilled the hole, haven't we? Yeah, we drilled the middle one. Oh, 
Uh, for the question, someone asked, why do we need to change it? It's because the hole, as they are, we struggle a bit to go through. You can't, you can't really feel it, but we feel it. I mean, Gary feel it. Um, so we change it because they're a bit blunt, so they need to be sharper. So we take new ones. So I don't know if you see Gary there, but he's trying to take new one, brand new one. Hope I answer your question. Yeah. So I don't know if you heard Gary, but we just get a brand new one. So hopefully, it's not this. It must be the material. Yeah, this is good. This is good to experience because. If everything goes very uh, smooth, that would be not good. Yeah, it's not it's not happening a lot. <laughs> so there's the so the material is a bit harder than expected, Gary. It moves around them. We try with, we're gonna try with the other piece. We'll do them. We haven't got the square hole in the middle, but we can we can show you the drilling in the top. Uh, Maxim, you don't need to keep it that close. It's okay. Just be a bit far. I mean, <laughs> we want you to be safe also. Don't yeah? worry. I'm safe. Oh, yeah? You're safe? Okay, good. It's just the camera. Okay, okay. So now this is okay, or? I yeah. Ju I've just realized what it was. It was actually the stop. So there is a stop on the side. Oh, and it doesn't, it doesn't allow it. you to go more. It was a stop on the side. So it was preventing us to go through. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what we can do, pull back to our room. Since we started to drill one. Somebody must have set the stop doing a job in between doing the lab class. Because they can use these drills for other jobs. I'm sure the check that. So. I remember that next time. So we do know now we can do these holes to a certain depth by using the stop. But on this job, the holes are going all the way through. And they're quite easy to line up, just turn it backwards if it doesn't grab. Stop up. Clamp. Turn it. That's our two holes there ready for tapping. So these two holes. And the look of the drying while we're at the drill, we can finish them up. M2 diameter 10 millimeters. I think, I think Gary, you can show them the tapping now. Um, so we're going to do the tapping, yeah. We'll do the yeah, tapping. yeah, I think it's, it's okay. Yeah. Talk about the tapping. 
so everyone, we just skip the 10 millimeter that drilling. And so we have a set of taps, usually it says on the packet M10 times 1.5. We have a set in the set. We have a one, a two, and a plug tap. I'll take these out. Let's go on. Down up. We've got number one. If you can see that. It's got a taper. First few threads. You can see the difference with the number two. Few more threads on there, and then number three. The threads more or less go all the way down to the bottom. We'll start with the number one. It's number so, one because we've got one mark on the top. Do you have a question, so Gary? Gary? Yeah. So Gary, so number one, it has the highest uh, lead, right? Highest chamfer. Lead. Yeah, yeah, you can see. So, so could you compare like both, like two putting into the hole? Try and put it on there so maybe it'll see a little bit different. A little bit better. Oh, okay, so the one at the bottom is the number one, is it? Yeah, number one at the bottom. So and it has like two. a higher, higher, like a yeah. chamfer there. And the one at the top is for the last stage, like finishing. Maybe from the side, yeah. you see better. So we start with number one. Right Tap wrench, put the job. Again, we want the whole the screw thread to go in square, so we use the top of the vise. Open the vise. We don't put it in. We want to try and get it as flat as we can. Looking at the top of the vise. Turn that up. Now, with having that lead, you can see the tap goes in a few millimeters just to start because when you use a plug tap plug tap won't won't go in at all we use the number one put it in trying to look we'll look down both and we'll see that we've got it square and we try and start by keeping it holding it as square as we can and we go in a couple of turns just to get it started Keep checking in it with, with square, both ways. Once we can feel it cutting, go you know, half a turn, and quarter a turn back, just to take that swath. If you can get in there, you might be able to see the swath. Can you see the swath on the bottom? So, yeah. As, I, as it cuts, again, from there, it's half a turn. And then quarter a turn back just to break that chip. So from there, half a turn, quite hard that. And it goes back, easy. And then suddenly I come to some resistance. I just break that chip off. I can go back to my start. So half a turn. Easy. So you feel some crunching feeling, is do you? Yeah. And then like that. That's just catching there, so I'm just going to break that chip and go back to my start. So, again, half a turn, quite uh, Come back, break the chip off. Again, half a turn. I don't know if you can see it on the camera falling. Yeah. So, so, then, so, once so I you feel do it. Go, it's going quite easy there. You know, it's, it's just spin round now. So, Gary, you, you did it like all like through the hole, like you even uh, tapped it beyond the bottom of the hole. Yeah, because yeah. it's a through yeah. hole. So that's number one. Yeah, so because we and have space, right? Two. Again, it should it's still be a little bit difficult, but that one will just drop in the hole. I'm going to give it a couple of turns just so I know it's in the right position. Again, it's, it, there's some resistance there now. Again, half a turn. Oh, we turn back half a turn. I get there, there is resistance, and then just 
go from there, half a turn. What would turn that? If I just keep turning it and turning it, that chip will just get bigger and bigger, and then you could end up breaking the tap. So you're just breaking the chips. So is this the number two? Is this number two tap? Yeah. Yeah, this is number two, yeah. Again, there is a little bit of resistance. When I know, when I know I'm getting more or less through the bottom of the hole, it does become easier and it will just spin all the way down. So, Gary, if we tried to do it with, with the number three tap directly in the beginning, it yeah. would be too difficult, right? Yeah, it'd be too difficult to go in with the number three. So the number three doesn't really drop in at all. You turn it backwards until I can just feel it. It's all about feel. And oh, this is a number three, so it's just cutting straight away. Yeah, the bigger the, the bigger the thread, the bigger the size, the hole, the harder it would be to actually turn it round. Now that's gone really easy now. So it just spins all the way in. All the way through. And you can see all the swaths here. You can see the swath at the bottom. That's why we need to do the quarter tap. This yeah. is good. That's it, you can see the thread. Hopefully you can see the thread because it's big thread. Oh yeah, this thread can be seen quite nice. Got a piece here that, I, that we've cut so you can see the inside of the thread. Oh yeah, that's very really nice. Beyond the white. Yeah, thank you. So this is the EDM, EDM cut, yeah. EDM machined part, I think. So you can see the threads like and the pitch. How much is the pitch here? Like, can you show the pitch on the thread, actual thread, Gary? Yeah, the picture of the thread inside. That's the. Can you see it? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's very nice. So, for example, from one 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 uh, groove to another, that's the pitch, right? From one groove to another is the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit uh, 1.5 millimeters, I think. Yeah. So pitch yeah, is 1.5. Also, the pitch is um, helps with the drilling as well. It's usually the diameter of the size, so that like 10 millimeters minus the pitch, that will give you your drill size. So like N10 times 1.5, so it's 1.5, so it's an 8.5 drill. Oh, that's like a rule of thumb. Yeah. So we use so we the we, we have, um, there, there is like a booklet that you can check. So because there's, there's thousands of different thread sizes, it's been possible to remember them all. So well, the most common, the, the one we try to use is metric, but there are all sorts of sizes. Yeah. So we also always have to refer. We always have to refer to the hand handbook, right? Yeah, the angle of the thread as well is sixty degrees. On an English thread, it'd be 55 degrees. Well, so the actual angle of each, you know, between each thread is, is uh, 60 degrees. Oh, this is 60 degrees thread? Okay. Yeah. Standard one. Yeah, so this is very, very good. Uh, if there's any questions, so please go and ask everyone. Uh, I want to take you to Kahoot, and after that, we will conclude the session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Gary, Maxim, and Gökhan. You're welcome. Yeah, so if, the, if they have questions, we'll, we may come back. Uh, so let's go to Kahoot now, everyone. So we will have some couple of questions left. So which one is true? The birds are preferred for better fitting of the components. Sorry, is this true or false? It's not which one is true. The birds are preferred for better fitting of the components. Oh, we have actually true or and false in uh, in 
balance. Uh, actually, it's false because we don't want pairs for even fitting. It's it will affect our fitting accuracy. So actually, the exercise this exercise name is also fitting. So you will see that we always try to deburr uh, whenever we create some surface. Yeah, so it's, this is a false. Okay, now we are getting some closer scores. Let's see, fifth one. What is the use of hammer punching? Sorry, it's also center punching. I, I had a typo here. So red one is reminding the whole location. Blue is guiding the drill bit. Yellow is achieving correct hole size. Green one making stronger surface. This is quite long, actually. It's like 70 seconds left. So if you can answer <laughs> as soon as possible, it will be finished. But we can wait. So center punching, we were doing it uh, during the marking, you remember? Yeah. But we use a hammer, so it's also hammer punching that I put a typo here. We use a hammer to punch the whole, uh, whole starter. Oh, this is quite long. I should have put less seconds here. Okay, so almost done. Let's see. Yes, it's guiding the drill bit because otherwise the drill will play because we are doing full-size drilling, as you remember. Reminding whole location, it's mostly for, uh, we use marking lines. Yeah, we already, to punching using marking lines and yellow uh, achieving correct hole size. It's the drill bit, uh, which is doing that size of the hole and stronger surface. Uh, that, that's partially, all of them are partially true, but yeah, the, the true, the really real one is the guiding the drill bit. That's the only reason actually. Okay, score. Okay, now we are we are having a very close score. So why do we use multiple taps? Red is to de for decreasing the cost. Blue is for easier tapping, and yellow for efficient chip breaking, and green for tapping multiple lead taps, multiple lead threads. So 20 seconds. So if you have any question, you can think of it, but we are almost done with the session. We will see now who is the winner today. Yes, that's for easier tapping. We have multiple stages. Um, Efficient chip breaking is, is not really because efficient chip breaking is more about how you do the tapping and you have to turn back sometimes. And tapping multiple lead, yeah, multiple lead thread we didn't do today, it's a single lead thread, you can check. Uh, so multiple lead thread we still can use, of course, multiple taps, but that's not the purpose of multiple tap. So the answer is for easier tapping. Okay, so let's see the final scores. So third one, okay. okay. First one, wow. So it's quite, quite a big lead there. Okay, congratulations, 10349. 
so you can print screen and this is your uh, trophy <laughs> in a way and um, yeah but i i want to uh, congratulate all of you for uh, joining us and uh, and experience this online session with us it was very important for your learning and also for uh, our experience and of course for your accreditation right and as i said in the beginning it was uh, automatically uh, recorded the attendance and if you have any question you can ask but i will stop recording and you are free to go now and again uh, thank you all and i wish we wish you all the best uh, in the remaining of your semester and your exams and with your graduation